ইলাহ ইল্লাল্লাহ ইন্নাল হামদালিল্লাহ নাহমাদুহু সুবহানাহু ওয়া নাস্তাঈনুহু ওয়া নাস্তাগফিরুহু ওয়া নাউযু বিল্লাহি মিন শুরুরি আনফুসিনা ওয়া মিন সাইয়াতি আমালিনা মান ইয়াহদিহিল্লাহু ফালা মুদিল্লা লাহু ওয়া মান ইয়ুদলিল ফালান তাজিদ লাহু ওয়ালিয়ান মুরশিদা ওয়া আশহাদু আন লা ইলাহ ইল্লাল্লাহ ওয়াহদাহু লা শারীকা লাহু লাহুল মুলক ওয়া লাহুল হামদ ইয়ুহি ওয়া ইয়ুমিত ওয়া হুয়া আলা কুল্লি শাইআন কাদীর اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم باسماعنا وابصارنا وقواتنا ما احييتنا اللهم اجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثارنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا اللهم على من عادانا اللهم ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا اكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا اللهم ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا رب العالمين اعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر ان الانسان لفي خسر الا الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم ان زلزله الساعه شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعه عما ارضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن نعذا بالله شديد وصلي وسلم على مبعوث رحمه العالمين سيدنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى اله وصحبه ومن والاه اما بعد اخي نعيم ممكن تعلي المايك شوي معلش اذا بتعرف كيف ها شوي بس بدون ايكو in the name of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most compassionate the most merciful all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he who is guided by the will of allah no one can misguide him and he who is misguided no one can guide him except allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i do bear witness that that there is no god but allah and muhammad is his messenger assalamu alaikum respected brothers and sisters Today's khutbah will be about the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Islamic law. Hikmatullahi azimu hikmatillahi fil ahkam al-shari'ya. The reason for this khutbah that some Muslims might find it difficult to perform some Islamic teachings. Might find it against their free will to apply what Allah is commanding. It could happen. For some reasons, some people might find it difficult, unreasonable, not easy, uncomfortable, many justifications. The end result is Muslims, some Muslims, might feel unsatisfied unhappy while they are performing what should be performed or they don't do it from the very beginning because they are either not convinced or they don't like or against their freedom or, or any other justifications hadi khutba ya ahibba hiya naw min al ijaba let's consider this khutba as part 1 yabdu fi mushkil bil rafa'atu sheikh abdul aziz wa ah khalas اذا في كونفليكت بين هذا وهذا اه اه هذا آه 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 طيب سوري اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد فا ات شود بي ات كود بي بارت 1 لذلك موضوعنا هو عن الله سبحانه وتعالى الحكيم حينما شرع لنا الاحكام الشرعيه وقال افعلوا ولا تفعلوا ممنوع مسموح مرغوب مكروه ما الحكمه من وراء ذلك وات از ذا ويزدوم بيهايند ذا اسلاميك لو اند اي نو ايفري سينجل مسلم اون ايرث از ان نيد فور such clarification but because we live in the west we will be in a more need for that because everything around you is pushing with the other direction everything is telling you you are free don't do it it's up to you it's what you think it's restrictions you know the concept of freedom sometimes might be misunderstood or misapplied so that's why as i told you khutbah this place basically one of its most important uh, rules basically is the uh solve the misconceptions or try to clarify the misunderstanding that has anything to do with 
Islam. Now, I will read a post by one of the scholars from Egypt, Jazakallahu Khairan, in Arabic, then I'll explain it in English, and it will be my introduction for this topic. أحد العلماء المصريين يقول تخيل أنك تمشي في مكان ما فإذا بك تقرأ لوحة مكتوب عليها ممنوع التقدم حقل الغام هنا يقول ستشكر من وضع اللوحة ولن تفكر في أنها قد تحد من حريتك بل ستفهمها على أنها ضمان لسلامتك وكذلك الأمر في حدود الله ومحرماته فهي لا تقيد حريتك بل تضمن سلامتك Now the translation of what this Egyptian scholar says He says imagine yourself walking in the streets You found a sign that reads or tells you the following Don't move forward Forward mine field A field which is full of Mines, which means explosive things. So if you kept moving forward, you could lose your life or part of your body or something, a disaster will happen. So a sign reads, don't move forward, a minefield. He continues, he said, definitely, you will not think that the one who put this sign is trying to restrict your freedom, but rather he's trying to ensure your safety. <laughs> so rather than thinking, look, why he's putting, no, 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 say thanks. Thanks that you told me, a minefield. I might lose my leg, I might lose half of my body, I might be disabled of my life, or I might die simply. So instead of thinking why this person decided to put this sign, because it restricts my freedom, think about that it was placed there to ensure your safety. Then he continues, this is exactly Allah. And it's exactly the example of the teachings, the regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His law. It was not designed, it was not revealed, it was not sent to restrict your freedom, but rather to ensure your safety. And this, by the way, just by explaining this post, I believe I've done my job in this khutbah. But because as we say, always we need to give examples to make it easy. What I will be doing in the coming 18 minutes that I have, I will giving you a common sense example that we all live and we agree upon. Then I'll make analogy to give you a few examples from the Islamic law. And by the way, one of the funny things that you need to explain to the people when you hear in the media, especially the American media, American media, when they try to attack the Sharia law, Sharia law, be careful, they will apply the Sharia law. What is the Sharia law? It's the Islamic law. And by the way, the word Sharia means law. It's the law of the law. Look how ignorant they are. Sharia means, linguistically means the way. As a terminology means the Islamic law. So when they say, be careful, they will apply the Sharia law. They will apply the law of the law. This is the meaning. Ignorance. So basically, Islamic law is the Sharia. Sharia is the law. Law is the Islamic Sharia. So all of them, they are talking about the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So be aware, be proud of what you have. Now, the common sense example that I always would love to use, traffic law. Look now, common sense. We have a traffic law. We have laws for universities. We have laws for schools. We have laws for everything. Is there anything on earth in this country that does not have a law? There is a law for families, a law for tax, tax law, university law, acceptance law, laws, why laws? If you put them together, they will be, if I'm not exaggerating, thousands, thousands of articles and items. Am I exaggerating if I said? Hundreds of hundreds. And I felt amazingly, as a, as a new visitor, I'm trying to, to attend the, the, the exam of the G1 and G2, you know, the full G for, for my driving. So I'm reading hundreds of questions, laws. Now, by law, you are not allowed to park your car more than three meters or up to 
few meters from the uh, hydrants, for example, water. Because there, if you did so, you would be an obstacle in the face of the fire truck if there is a fire. By law, you are not allowed to move your car if you are watching or approaching a bus school with the flashing lights. By law, you are not allowed to exceed or to over or to pass over or to take over or to pass a car if the line is completely solid. By law, you are not allowed. By law, by law, by law, by oh, what was What's this? Is this a law? Now, my point, this is the concept of law. Can we live without laws? The answer is no. Now, is it true that we are all satisfied with every single part of the law? The answer is no, definitely. Are you all satisfied with the speed limit, for example, as a human beings, especially the youth? He's laughing, okay? If it's up to youth, are they satisfied with the speed limit of 50 kilometers inside cities? 50, 50, as we say in Arabic, Zayl Mashi al You know, in Arabic language, this is speed for many Arabs. It's like someone who's walking on eggs, which means very slow. There is no youth on earth will be satisfied with 50 kilometers for, as a speed for his car. He would love just, you know, to high speed. But by law, you have to, what? To restrict yourself. If you don't, the law will be enforced against you. Who cares whether you like or you dislike? Who cares whether you love or care? Have the feeling that you will love, but obey the law. Am I exaggerating? or this is the reality. Go to university law. You are not allowed to be a university student unless if you achieved X, Y, Z from Marx. Something, documents, blah, blah, blah. If you did not, you did not finish. Is there any university in Canada or in the world will accept you if you do not finish school? You are not graduated from school. By law, you must. Is this illogical? By the way, it should not be, not necessarily it's logical. Now, Mentally speaking, logically speaking, is it possible that someone who did not go to school to be genius and he can go through the university and be the first? Is it, is it possible? Definitely. Is there any university who will ask, accept him? No. So is it up to what you think he's a genius or up to the law? <laughs> it's up to the law. You don't like it, who cares? Don't like it, but law will be enforced against you. You have to obey the law. Now, if you want to pay attention to what I'm telling, go to the tax law in Canada, in America, especially in the West. Tax law. <laughs> May God be with your soul if you do not declare the money that you receive. And if you are captured doing so, really, May Allah be with you. May Allah be with you. And you know what I'm talking about. But are you satisfied with the fact to declare everything humanly? Are you satisfied? <laughs> I don't want you to answer, but you know the answer. Every single person, if it's up to him, maybe he would love not to declare more than 10%. He would love to enjoy the rest. But by law, you have to do it. But this law has justification. The justification, if you don't pay the tax, where the services will come to you from? <laughs> How will they give you an excellent uh, roads? How will they give you health care, hospitals, universities, schools? How? If you don't pay, I don't like it. We don't care if you don't like it as long as you pay. <laughs> Is this the case or not? This is the concept of law, which happens in every single aspect, in every single second in your life. You live it, you accept it, not you as an Arab, not you as an Muslim, as a human being living on earth in any country on earth, especially in the West. If that's the case, if that's the case, why, when it comes to Islamic law, some of us feel unsatisfied, unhappy? You know, Sheikh, but you know, you know, if you if you dare to say this, do it with the laws that they are applied on you. Go and try to delete them, cancel them from life, if you can, if you have the courage to do it. Don't just put just the power against Allah, because you will face a big problem. You don't dare to say, I hate the tax law, and I don't dare 
to break the law of the traffic. I don't dare because I know that I will be punished. And no one will say this is inhuman. No, by law, you have broken the law and you will be punished. And as I told you last time or in previous khutbah, if someone, you know this, what, the biggest, biggest sign on the road, which is about three meters by two meters, biggest sign about the penalties for those who over the speed limit with 50 kilometers tells you two up to $10,000. You might go to jail up to two years, suspension of your license up to two or three years. Just 50 kilo and I've done nothing and I did not. Yeah, this is the law. Definitely, if it's up to us, we will hate it, but we obey the law. So I give you the justification as a common sense that it's something part of your life. You live it in every single second, whether you are living in America or the United States, sorry, or in Canada, or living in Europe or anywhere where law is applied. This is the concept of law. So please, as a Muslim, when you come to Islamic law, at least if someone is holding some kind of hatred or any kind of bad feelings towards Islamic teachings, just, just bring the fact that you are living, applying tens and hundreds of laws and you are fully satisfied because there's justification, even though, even though there is a big defect in the man-made laws. It's impossible to be just 100%. Because always, the one who puts the law is a human being or a group of human beings. And sometimes they might be inclining to a group or against a group, they have some kind, you know, like for example, alcohol now. Common sense tells you alcohol, it destroys everything. Now one of the simple proofs for that, if you are caught, if you are 16 or up to 19 or under 19, having G1, and if the percentage of alcohol is above zero, you will face a penalty and you might go to the jail. And suspension for you above zero, which means nothing. You are not allowed to drink alcohol. But alcohol is allowed outside. If you want to drive, it's not allowed. It's prohibited by law. But it's allowed, yes, it's prohibited by law. So why, when it comes to Islam, we say, I think, please, brothers, there's a lacking of spaces. Can you please come step forward? If you can squeeze yourself to your right hand, it will be okay as well. Squeeze to your right hand and please step or two steps forward. Jazakumullahu khairan. Come to the quick examples in the last 10 minutes that we have. Quick example about Islamic law. Our topic is what? The divine wisdom, Allah's wisdom in Islamic law. When Allah gives us a law to do or not to do, it's for our benefit. It's to ensure our safety, not to restrict our freedom. So this is the core point of my khutbah. I, 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 I take you back to the expression of that uh, Egyptian scholar. He said, when you saw the sign of that, that tells you don't move forward, there is a minefield. It's not to restrict your freedom, it's to protect you. It's to guarantee your safety. It's to ensure your safety, not to make your life complicated or restricted. <laughs> Taking this in mind, very quick examples. The prohibition of a riba. Sometimes, because we repeat this, but we don't explain the justifications why Allah decided to make the riba haram. <coughs> why usury, riba, interest is prohibited. Why? Simply. In a very simple word, Allah created the money to be a means of exchange with goods, items, benefits, or for donations to help. Money should not be exchanged with money because you will kill the life. Money is created by Allah to be exchanged, okay? So, you have an item, you have goods I want to buy from you. This is money with sila, with goods, with items. I take something, I pay something. Buy one, two. Money 
exchange with services, benefits. You, can, you have skills, I don't have it. You can cut the grass outside my, you can remove the snow, you can fix my computer. I can't or I don't have a time. So I pay you because you have done something as service. So exchange with items, things, goods, or exchange with or pay in opposite to benefits or services or out of my love because I respect you I want to help you I donate or I give a loan without interest or I help or I give a gift this is a package 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 but the system of riba says bankers they take the money of the rich it's freezed here then the money will be given as a loan for the people in need those will return it back money with money money with money those in the middle the vampires some of them just take the money give the money take the money give the money they will give part of the interest for this for for freezing their money in the bank they will give part of it with double of interest so the money with the money that's why as if they are you know as if they are, that's why why some people they call some bankers they call them vampires because simply they are controlling and slaving everything in the society if you want to understand what I'm talking about go and read about the collapse into 2018 that happened in the world and on top of them in the United States trillions and trillions and trillions of money just full collapse why because of the riba because basically money with money money with money so you have money just on the computer there is no real thing. So Allah is asking us not to live on a base of fake. <laughs> money just be exchanged. Either I'll give it you as a gift or I buy something or I buy a service. That's why we don't have just the new banking system in Islam. So it's not a mere philosophical, theoretical pleasure in Islam. It's a matter of saving you from quote unquote being enslaved this is the riba so this is the justification why riba is haram in a very simple word this could take special lectures for hours i give it to you just in a very simple word without many details so yeah sheikh why you no 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 okay imagine that you don't understand is it the case that you understand every single in the immigration law or tax law or university law or the traffic law and you obey it? In many cases you don't. In some cases you, you don't like. In some cases even you hate but you obey the law. <laughs> but when you understand the justification, you will obey, obey the law with love. You will obey it with full satisfaction. That's why please seek the knowledge. Don't refuse something that was, has been told by Islam that this is wrong, for example. Well, I don't think it's wrong, depending on what. Well, I, this is what I feel. Have you studied? No. Have you read? No. Have you asked a scholar? No. On what base? What does I feel? This is very dangerous. Be careful. Be careful. Why khamr is haram? Go back. It's not to restrict you, it's to save you. Okay, you don't want to save yourself. It's designed, I mean Islam, to save the others from you. But I decided to drink. Is it a matter of my personal freedom? Just, but if I'm drunk, what could I be doing? Let's count. I could be driving and kill some people, true or false? I could come, return back to my house and hurt any one of the members of my family up to killing them. True or false? If I came drunk and my wife told me, please till when you will stay drunk and I became angry, what am I might be doing? Killing her, maybe. Then when I wake up, really I did it? Yes, salam. Sahih, no. <laughs> Wallah, yes, you did it. Wallah, I'm very sorry. Sorry. Get out. Because you were drunk. How much we heard about people, they come to their houses, they urinate on themselves in front of their kids because of alcohol. Can I count? Maybe up to the morning I count to you. By the way, I read like a survey, a report, that one of every three married women in the UK, they are hit on daily basis by their husbands when they come drunk. One of three, which means 33% of married British ladies, they are hit badly by their husbands when they are drunk. No one speaks about women's rights. 
And we have tens of examples. Just the example that you are not allowed to drive by drunk. And you know, the policeman, when he stops you, there is the test for your breathe, okay? If it's above zero, may God be with you. Why? It's a common sense that it is harmful. It kills. It, if, okay, I don't care. My, no, 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 no. You don't have your personal freedom. There is something beyond your personal freedom, the benefit of the others. What if we come to zina, fornication? Zina, why it's prohibited? I know it's a pleasure for a man or woman to sleep together to have sex. I know. But who told you that regulations are designed just for your or my personal pleasure? It's designed to save the community, the whole ummah, the whole nation. Zina is prohibited, for example, because when Allah created us and he created the sexual, emotional desire in us, it's to keep the human race on earth and to do imara development up to the day of judgment, not just to enjoy sex. No, this is a simple part, a drive that created to do the biggest. So we need the families. So what is the harmful end result of zina, of fornication, of adultery, destroying families. And I think you don't need me to tell you what families are suffering in the West, in general, in the world. Just to give you a simple example, I finish. I lived six years in the UK. Wallahi, billahi, tallahi. It, 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 I reached to, to, to a level that it became part of my daily normal news that I read in the daily news at that time, more than 20 years ago. It was not, we didn't have the internet. It was normal paper, newspapers. So it's something very normal. But just to give you, 20 years ago, the population of the UK it was 64 million when I was there. Now, according to them, 15 millions of them, they are above 65. Most of them, they live alone. 15, that's why they call it, in Arabic, they call it the old country. At that time, I don't know now, 15 millions above 65. Most of them, they live alone. Most likely with a pet, a dog or a cat. Now, what is the normal thing that I used to read it nearly on a daily basis? A body of a man was found in his apartment because of the rotten, the smell of rotten. The body was rotten, molded completely. They discovered because of the smell, hello, please, police, I, I, I doubt there is something. They come, they break. He passed away 10 days ago, 15 days ago, 20 days ago, 25, completely rotten. You know, all the, amazingly, wallahi, on daily basis we used to hear this. Why? Because there is no family. <laughs> Why there is no family? Because some of them decided just to enjoy from the beauty of the relation of man and woman just the sex. Maybe he has kids, but not necessarily with a family, with a restriction, with a responsibility, with taking care. So there are no ties. Why should I care if you just decided to bring me and then my mother, she did for, she wanted to do abortion, but then God decided that to live. Why should I have this kind of beautiful feeling toward you if you are my mother, toward you if I am my father? Why? Why should I? If you ask me by the 16 to leave my house, okay? Do to leave your house. Go and take care of yourself. Why should I have this kind of feel of gratitude to you? Why? This is the destruction of the family. That's why when we understand that, now for example, fornication is haram, adultery is haram, it's to preserve the family. So, if you want to take care of the family, wherever you are, wherever you live, you must believe in the prohibition of zina. <laughs> Understanding this, please don't let anyone tell you about the difficulty or the restriction of Islamic law. I will say this, and I will say this, and I will say this, and I will say this. Alhamdulillah, we praise Allah, 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 just one reminder to sum up everything. <coughs> Allah designed the law not to restrict your freedom, but to ensure your 
safety. Please be proud of this. Do your best to understand your religion. Let others understand this. Allahumma ghfir lana warhamna wa afina wa afu anna. Allahumma arhamna fawta al-ardi wa tahta al-ardi wa yawm al-ardi alayka ya kareem. Subhanaka ya kareem wa la nuhsithana an alayka anta kama athnayta ala nafsik anta al-muqaddim wa anta al-muakhir wa anta ala kulli shayin qadir. Rabbi ghfir li wa li walidayi. Rabbi arhamhuma kama rabbayani saghira. Rabbi ghfir lana wa li walidina. Rabbi arhamhuma kama rabbayana saghira. Ya Allah. اللهم ارحمنا فوق الأرض وتحت الأرض ويوم العرض عليك يا كريم سبحانك لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك أنت المقدم وأنت المؤخر وأنت على كل شيء قدير إن الله يأمر بالعد والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة